Sorry, I thought we were taking ourselves a little too seriously. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Will you guys sing with me this time? Uh, At the end. I'll give it a shot. Do you yeah. need to feel safe? After the bridge. <laughs> My name is Calvin Arsenia. Um, or Arsenia, I think it's three syllables. It's It means vir virility, actually. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter. Yes. Uh, composer, performance artist. I only play instruments so I can sing. Like, I don't play any of them really enough to, like, just get by. Yeah, I feel as you on that. As an instrumentalist. No, 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 no. I, I, and yes. my voice has always been my first instrument. I wanted to be a painter, not an artist first. Yeah. Then, when I was about 13, 12, 13, uh, a friend of mine heard me singing and was like, you need to sing. And she, oh. like, took me around to her, like, classmates or her, like, classmates and her teachers at the school and made me sing for them. And then I was in choir after that, so that yeah. was, like, later, you know? <laughs> Uh, but I thought that like being a singer was like something that I would never do. Like I would just never do that. Like why would you do that? Even if they weren't able to like put the language to it, every musician longs to create transcendence for their audiences. Mm -hmm. um, people go to music and to pay money for concerts so that they can feel more than their mundane. What I've learned is, and, and what I and, and the way that I approach live music is like. Like, I don't care what songs I sing, I don't care what technique I'm using, I don't care what instrument I'm behind. Yeah, yeah. What we are here to do and to experience is something that's transcendent. So everything else has to, has to be in the back burner. And that's set list, and that's keys, and like, yeah. you know? So I love to work with musicians who can kind of just jump in and aren't afraid to go on a journey. Mm. So when I'm working with other people, it's like, I want to see, like, where do you feel comfortable? How right. do I want, how can you shine? Yes. Because this is all about this palette of colors that we can all right. shine in. You know, I have, I've worked with musicians where it's like, I don't, I don't want to talk about mistakes when I get off stage. Because we just did something together mm -hmm. that's magic. Mm -hmm. And we can't fix the mistakes that happened until our next rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So don't talk about that now. Let's just celebrate. <laughs> and I find that, that I live in this really beautiful symbiotic situation where I have people who love to make things and who love to be a part of things that are grand mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily feel like it's appropriate to make themselves that grand thing right right so so if so I collaborate with a lot of um, visual artists and graphic designers filmmakers um, who are looking to do something that's that's different and interesting yeah so you imagine a garden you know what I mean like unless you go and fertilize that garden it will not nourish you so you have to feed the things that are feeding you, yeah. which are the musicians that are in my in my world. You know, and, and at some point, and I'm and I'm getting there for the first time in my life, where I can write them checks and pay them for their work. You know, and it's so support so your nice. friends. It's so nice. I only work with people that I believe in. Oh, yeah. And You're... so it's like, thank God I get to pay you. Like <laughs> I I love this. Another part of community is that they have to stand up for what they're worth. In order for me to receive what I'm worth. Yeah. Like our colleagues, the the way that the, the music, like the, that an industry works is like, like if you if you are always working for free and your and your and your talent is amazing, then I can't ask for what I need to live. Okay, I want to have one-off shows. Yeah. For the rest of my life that are curated for the audience who is in the room. All right. So catastrophe. Catastrophe. Album release. The album was designed to go from love at first sight. Yeah. Through the process of figuring it out and then and leaving that love. And so I went into the room several times to scope it out and I designed the show for the room. Yeah. And then yeah, I wanted to entertain time. all five senses. All the, all the models were, 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 were dressed in a traditional Chinese um, like dress. Yeah. So like for each of the songs they had different tasks. So for this, for instance, like the second, well, like the first song, they all came in from the back and they brought th the, the props forward, right? Okay. But through the crowd, so like everyone got bumped and like, had, you know, it was very tactile. Physical, kind of yeah. yeah. And then they, they had chocolates for the first song, nice. which was Love at First Sight, and then they had the aphrodisiac, you know? And then, um, then there was like a dancing time, and then there was a time where I like went through the crowd, and we had a soul train, and so they were all a part of the soul train, and I had a stilt walker there for that. I <laughs> went into the middle of the crowd, and then one of the models blew um, holy powder, red holy powder on me, stained my clothing, I passed out on the floor, you know, and then they picked me up and put me back on stage and then I sang dying. Safe, I unrobed my outer costume, yeah. which had a black one under underneath. Yeah. And then around midnight, I uh, had a, a painter friend of mine um, from the community come and live paint me with his hands and, yeah. and change how I looked again. Then for the intermission, I stayed on stage. Okay. Had another performer on the second stage uh, do the intermission. 
Um, and then I came back and did um, uh, a piece with the dancer that was like in black light. My mother catered. And then there was a wine tasting upstairs as well. And we had projections that, that we did, we filmed music videos for that happened on the back screen. And then I put them, they were projection mapped on these moons that I had designed because it was the full moon. And we had bubbles in the last song. And so, but like, I want to create these transcendent moments where it was so immersive and so explorative of the senses and the human experience and, and really like unfurl like what we think is like proper or okay or etiquette in performance, in the performance space. And like, I just, I just love like being able to, to like, yeah, push the boundaries and say like, wait, is the line here or is it here? You know, mm -hmm. like as a performer, what can I actually get away with? Yeah. But and not not in a way to be weird, but but how immersive can we go together? have been long winded but I'm just kind of glad you asked three, four so please do what you need to feel safe do what you need to feel safe do what you need to feel safe with me so please do what you need to feel safe do what you need to feel Safe. Do as you need to feel safe. 
Do what you need to feel safe with me. All right. <laughs> All right. That's a song. That's a song.